Hi, my name is Eva McManaman and I'm the Senior Qualification Manager for Modern Languages at Pearson. In this short video, I'm going to walk you through our approach to selecting vocabulary and how our content is organised by thematic context. To begin, I'm going to walk you through the DfE subject content requirements that we had to comply with. So at the foundation tier, we were required to include 1,200 words. And then at the higher tier, we needed to add another 500 to make up to 1,700 words for higher tier. If you consider that currently the vocab list for the current GCC are in excess of 2,000 words, that gives you a sense of how there's been a reduction in the content to be learnt. Another feature to consider is that there's no expectation of prior learning. Therefore, we had to ensure that we included any words that you might assume to be taught at Key Stage 3, greetings, colours, days a week, months of the year. If we want to assess them, if we want to use them in our assessments, then we had to include them on our list. So again, that might make you think about the nature of the list and how comprehensive it is. We are in the reading papers allowed to include cognates and 2% of vocabulary outside of the list, but those would be glossed. So all the content that is in the reading text will be known by students if they know the vocabulary list or glossed. Another feature that we had to think about was that 85% of our list had to be from the top 2,000 most frequent words. And this is based on a very large corpus dictionaries um, that we were required to use. And that top 2,000 words does include a lot of the functional vocabulary items like conjunctions and pronouns, um, articles, um, which are required by all the organisations to be included. So there's some similarity there. However, so that meant that of the 1,200 words for foundation tier, 180 of those words could come from outside the top 2,000. And for the higher tier, that meant that 255 words could come outside the top 2,000. But as we've already chosen 180 for foundation tier, that's actually only another 75 for the higher tier. Just to kind of give you a bit of context around that, that, if you think that in French, the words for birthday, restaurant and present are all outside the top 2,000, you start to get a sense of the task we had to carefully select the 180 or 225 words of which we had free choice outside of top 2000. We made sure that we made some very careful choices there and I'll walk you through that in a moment. In addition to the word counts above, we're also allowed to include 20 cultural or geographical items and 30 multi-word phrases and you will find these listed within the vocabulary lists. Another thing to take into account is that you shouldn't forget that these are the limits that we had to comply with when we were designing our qualification and assessment materials um, and that we can't use vocabulary outside of these, these lists. However, for productive tasks like speaking and writing, your students can use any vocabulary they've been taught. They will gain equal credit for this and you don't have to limit your teaching to the vocabulary on these lists if you don't wish to. So as you have seen already, we need to be very careful about our choice of words, especially in those words outside the top 2000. We had a DfE subject content requirements to consider, but there were many other factors that we also needed to bear in mind. Firstly, continuity. We wanted to reduce the impact on your existing planning and resources and ensure there was some continuity from the current qualification to the new qualification. We also talked to a lot of teachers about their preferences with regards to existing themes and topics and paid attention to that when we were choosing our thematic context. Similarly, we also talked to students about their preferences and needs, which didn't always um, correlate with what the teachers told us. But the students were very clear about what they want to be able to talk about and what they think they will need in the future. Finally, diversity, equity, inclusion was a particular factor that we need to consider. The French corpus is, actually, is quite dated. It's from 2009, so already 14 years old. And if you think about how the world has moved on since 2009 and how things maybe have changed in our current society with, in, with regards to diversity, equity, inclusion, um, we wanted to ensure that our vocabulary list reflected current society and that students would feel included and that their families were included. So all these factors were taken into account when we were choosing our vocabulary. So what thematic context did we choose? 
we needed to think about how the thematic context would provide coverage of the vocabulary. And sometimes it was because we had thematic context that we chose certain vocabularies, so the two were interplaying as we were designing the vocabulary list. We wanted to ensure that you had a way to organise your teaching and learning. We know how important it was for you to have thematic context on which you could hang your schemes of work so that there was a, a cohesive way in which you were teaching the vocabulary and the grammar requirements of a new qualification. We wanted to ensure that there was a focus for text in reading and listening and that there was a focus for tasks in writing and speaking. This way that your your, you could prepare your students effectively for the assessments. So we have all the vocabulary and these are the thematic contexts that they can be organised into. We have my personal world, lifestyle and wellbeing, my neighbourhood, media and technology, studying in my future and travel and tourism. And hopefully those thematic contexts feel quite um, re relatable, quite familiar, um, but also give you a sense of the range that will be included in this new qualification. So these are the subjects that the recovery lends itself to. Hopefully these will seem quite relatable and familiar to you. There should be some from that you might have already covered at Key Stage 3 or you might think, oh yes, that links to what we've already done in the current GCSE. Um, so things like family and friends, food and drink, for example. We also had to think about the student interest to make sure that the new qualification would be relatable. So we've got things like social media and gaming included. And, and when you see the word TV, please do think about the streaming services, which we know students don't watch normal TV anymore. We understand that it's all about streaming, Netflix, et cetera, and YouTube. Um, we've also got the students' concerns presented. They told us that they wanted to have vocabulary related to equality and they wanted to have vocabulary related to the environment. So those you will find. When it comes to the natural world, some people often ask about that one and what that means. Basically, we just needed a, a catch-all term for animals and aspects of landscape like rivers, beach, mountains, etc. So that's what we mean by the natural world. We've also ensured that our vocabulary can be future focused. So within future opportunities, you won't just find the words for employment or university, but also apprenticeships, which we know is uh, one of the pathways for your students. And we've ensured that we've, we are inclusive and we make, we've ensured that we've included words for lesbian, gay and non-binary people and for disabled people, because we want to make sure that the students are able to talk about themselves and their friends and family in an appropriate man manner. In terms of culture, we haven't specified anything cultural in particular because we know that you as teachers have got wonderful ways of bringing culture into your lessons and that you will bring that in as and when you see fit and in a way which is appropriate to your students. So that's we've left free to you. So I just showed you a very long list of different subjects that the vocabulary lends itself to. But on this slide, I show you one way in which you might allocate the subjects to the different thematic contexts. And I really want to emphasise that this is just one way um, because these subjects can't be fixed, just like the vocabulary can't be fixed against one thematic context. Subjects like food and drink and environmental issues, they're currently in lifestyle and wellbeing and my neighbourhood on this sheet here. But they could equally be in travel and tourism. You're going to deal with these numerous times in different contexts, and that, that is the right way to be going about things in terms of recycling the content. Equally, something like transport, which has just been put in this um, slide against travel and tourism, you might actually think, oh, that's really important for when students are talking about their neighbourhood. And we just want to emphasise to you that that's absolutely fine and do feel that you can go across these subjects whenever you need to. So we have now published our interactive vocabulary list to help you with reviewing the content of the new qualification. On this list, you will find all the vocabulary for the foundation tier listed on one sheet, which is also the core of the higher tier. And then on another sheet, the additional 500 vocabulary items for the higher tier, which we've organised separately. These sheets then, these ones are locked, um, but I'll talk about that in a moment and how you can um, edit them. And there's also two more interactive sheets, which I will walk you through as well.
As I mentioned, the complete lists are locked, but you can simply download these, copy the full list into a new spreadsheet, and then do whatever you want in terms of filtering and editing that sheet. You might want to look at the frequency numbers. You might want to consider parts of speech. Whatever you want to do to organize vocabulary for you and your students, but this is one way in which you'd be able to manipulate it, okay? But there's also the interactive format. And on this one, we've already got slices created, so you could download it. You can slice by part of speech and or by subjects. If you want to choose more than one part of speech or more than one subject, you just have to do control and click and then you can get more than that. Um, here you can see that I sliced by friendship and by nouns and that presents with you kind of part of the list that this created. Obviously, the tagging of the vocabulary against subjects was a subjective task. We had experts um, completing this task and reviewing each other's tagging. And I'm sure there may be ones which you might think differently about, um, but it gives you a sense that vocabulary can be used in many different subject areas. So the previous slide showed you the interactive um, sheet in a way in which you could slice. And this slide just shows you another way in which you might um, play around with the interactive sheet. Because if you just have it organized by frequency number and you start scrolling down to some of the higher numbers where you get past all the, uh, the general and basic words, you'll start to see that some of the words are repeating many times. And that's because we've tagged them to various subjects. So here in this example, you can see that health was tagged to six different subject areas. Um, and this will kind of give you a sense that, you know, if you had selected or sliced by sports, the word for health was, had appeared. And when you select food and drink, the word for health appears again. And then similarly for social media and gaming. We hope that this is going to help you with planning the recycling of vocabulary across your schemes of work and that you'll see where the opportunities are for embedding that vocabulary into your students' long-term memory. Thank you.